Welcome to the Uncomplicating Weight Loss Podcast. My name is Eva Rodriguez, proud Latina, single mom, and certified integrative nutrition, health, weight loss, and mindfulness coach. I'm passionate about teaching women how to balance being busy and healthy without complicated rules or restrictions. On this podcast, I'll be simplifying weight loss concepts and mindset shifts so that you can be confident in your curves. It won't always be easy, but it doesn't have to be complicated. A question that I get asked all the time is, what should I eat before I work out and after I work out? Another really common question is, should I eat on an empty stomach so that I can burn more fat? So let's talk about it. When it comes to nutrition, one of the most important things to remember is that Eating the right foods at the right times is the simplest way to reach your weight loss goals. It's not starving yourself, it's not restricting yourself, and it's not forcing yourself to eat shit that you don't like just because you heard it's good for you, okay? So when it comes to working out, it's crucial that you fuel your body with the right foods before and after your session, regardless of what type of exercise you're doing, whether it's cardio or strength training or a combination of the two. If you want the best results and you want to put your body in the best position to recover and heal so that you're not super sore the next day, what you eat really matters. Now, before I became trained and certified in health, nutrition, weight loss, all of that, I used to work out on an empty stomach because I'd always heard that working out on an empty stomach burned more fat. You may have heard this before as well. However, I have learned that whether you eat before you exercise or not, your body's actually going to burn the same amount of fat and you can actually lose muscle if you regularly work out on an empty stomach. As you may or may not know, I am huge on building lean, sexy muscle. That's my shit. That's how I was able to finally lose my last 20 pounds quickly and finally keep the fucking weight off. So losing muscle is not something that I want and you shouldn't either. If you haven't listened to my strength training episode, be sure to go back and listen to episode seven to learn more about why building muscle is essential for your weight loss journey, especially if you're a curvy girl like me. So here's a quick explanation of why you shouldn't exercise on an empty stomach. When you're hungry, your body goes into survival mode and it draws protein from muscle instead of from your kidneys and your liver, where the body normally looks for protein. When this happens, you lose muscle mass, which can ultimately slow down your metabolism and make it harder for you to lose weight. Plus, if you exercise on an empty stomach, you're not giving yourself the fuel that you need to power through an intense training session. And if you train with me or if you take any of my programs, they are quick and they're intense because we're busy as fuck and we don't have time to be lollygagging. So you need your energy. Otherwise, it's the equivalent to, I think I've said this in another episode, but I used to go to the gym during my lunch break and just bullshit for an hour, like strolling on the treadmill, just like, you know, wasting time. And and then I'd be like, oh, I go to the gym, but I'm not losing weight. Well, no shit. (laughs) No shit. Like you have to have, you know, a level of intensity in order for it to actually give you results. So you want to make sure that you have enough energy in your body to exert and to get the most out of your workout because we want to make the most out of the limited amount of time that we have as busy women, busy moms, busy entrepreneurs to get this shit done, right? So what to eat before a workout? So you may be familiar with pre-workouts. They're drinks and powders and, and supplements and that sort of thing that some people claim that really helps them with their workout and kind of gives them the energy that they need and all of that. I personally don't use pre-workouts. I'm not an endurance athlete and I'm not a power lifter. So I don't see the value in it for a person like me. Therefore, I don't have any that I can recommend to you. One thing to keep in mind is that pre-workout supplements are more for someone who already has their daily nutrition intake set and are looking for like those small 
extra gains, but they're not a substitute or replacement for improper nutrition. So if you're not getting the right nutrients, that's where you got to start. Like getting a pre-workout supplement is not going to do you any good. Like you're just going to be wasting your money on that, you know? So I'd rather you get your macronutrients and vitamins and minerals from the foods that you eat versus relying on some sort of supplement. It's just going to be much more beneficial for you and for your overall health. So the best pre-workout meals are going to have some form of a complex carbohydrate and a protein. The key is to have a mix of complex and simple carbs so that the release of energy during your workout is slow and steady throughout your entire routine instead of having a surge of energy and then a crash afterwards. My personal go-to for pre-workout snack is an apple and a few walnuts. I know that's super basic, but I'm such a picky eater, even at my big age. Bananas and oranges are also really good fruit options. You can also do an apple or banana with almond butter if you prefer that over walnuts or with walnuts. I don't really like nut butters either, but we're not talking about <laughs> we're not talking about my picky ass eating habits today. So some other good pre-workout meals and snacks that are going to help keep you energized throughout your workout are brown rice with black beans, sweet potato with steamed broccoli, multi-grain crackers with hummus, oatmeal with berries, and you can sweeten your oatmeal with either stevia or agave, because remember, we want to stay away from added sugars. You could do a slice of whole wheat toast with a sliced banana and a dash of cinnamon, or you could do something like Greek yogurt with or without fruit or trail mix inside. Now, let's talk about what you should eat after your workout and why it's important to eat something 30 to 60 minutes after you finish working out. So during exercise, your body taps glycogen for energy. Glycogen is the fuel that's stored in your muscles. After you finish your last rep, your muscles are depleted of their glycogen stores and they're basically broken down. So you wanna make sure that after your workout, you're eating or drinking something that combines protein and carbohydrates. What this does is it refills your energy stores builds and repairs your muscles that were previously broken down, and it helps to keep your metabolism burning strong. And that's what we want, right? Remember, whether you're working out to lose weight or to build muscle, you still need to eat the right foods and refuel your body. If your body thinks that it's starving, it will actually hold on to more calories because it will go into survival mode. I can't tell you how many times I've looked at a client's food journal and I've had to tell her that she's not eating enough and that's why she's not losing the weight. And the reaction is always, what the fuck? Because we've been conditioned to believe that calories in, calories out is the answer to weight loss. And guess what? It's not. And this is why. Also, the sooner you start refueling after your workout, the better off you're going to be. Research shows that your body's ability to refill muscle stores decreases by 50% if you wait to eat two hours after your workout compared to eating right away. So I suggest that you plan ahead. If you're going to go to the gym, bring your recovery drink with you or a pack of snacks so that you can eat it right after you finish your workout. The best foods to eat after a workout contain protein and some carbohydrates so that they can speed up recovery, maximize your exercise benefits, and help maintain lean muscle. My personal go-to is a protein smoothie. I recommend going for a plant-based protein powder. And I usually do kale, banana, strawberries, either almond milk or water, and hemp seeds. Other good on-the-go options are chocolate milk. That surprised me, actually, but it's true. Avocado, chia seed pudding, or Greek yogurt. And if you have time for a meal, then I would recommend a salad with roasted chickpeas, some sautéed or steamed vegetables with tofu, a quinoa bowl with blackberries and peca pecans, pecans. I don't know how to say that fucking word. <laughs> Is it pecan or pecan? Listen, I learned English when I was five. So this is my second language and sometimes I fuck up words, but you know what I'm trying to say, right? <laughs> Moving on, you can do two slices of whole wheat bread with nut butter. You can, all, you can also add agave, agave nectar, or you could do two slices of whole wheat bread with tuna, and then you can mix that with some hummus. Grilled chicken with sauteed or steamed vegetables is also a good option. 
You could do an omelet that's stuffed with sauteed vegetables and avocado. Or you could also do grilled salmon with a baked sweet potato. So those are just some options, right? You can play around with it. If you know you don't like a certain food or whatever, you can substitute it with something. But this gives you a good idea of what that that good fine mix between the good carbs and a good protein, what that looks like, right? And it goes without saying that you must stay hydrated before, during, and after your workout. Depending on the intensity of your workout and also the temperature wherever you're located, you may also need an electrolyte drink to replenish the sodium and potassium that you lost in your sweat. I always have Propel packets in my cupboard that I just put in my water bottles for electrolytes, but you can also do coconut water after a workout as well. As we wrap up, and I think I forgot to say this earlier, so I'll say it now, you want to keep in mind that if you're going to eat close to your workout time, you want to keep your meals simple and small so that you don't get a stomach ache. So you don't want to have a big, you know, a big breakfast or a big meal right before you work out if you're going to go work out in 30 minutes because you're probably going to get a stomach ache, right? So as with anything, use your common sense and also try a few different options to see what works for your body, both with the timing of the meals and what you're actually eating. It's a lot of just like trying new things, that's how you kickstart, jumpstart your body and your metabolism and all of that. That's how you get out of a plateau, really. It's, it's all about trying new shit. And that also keeps life exciting. I've also learned as I've grown and matured that you don't know until you try, right? So just kind of keep that in the back of your mind when you're thinking about what you can start adding to your pre and post workout nutrition. All right, my friend, that is all for today. I'll talk to you next week. Bye for now. Thanks so much for tuning in this week and trusting that none of this has to be complicated. At the end of the day, I want you to feel empowered to know that you can have the health, the body, and the life that you desire. Be sure to subscribe so you never miss an episode and tag me on Instagram while listening at It's Eva Rodriguez so that I can support you along your journey. I'll talk to you next week.